Okay, and I'm sorry. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, I'd like to say that uh, there are no picture in my slide. And in the, in, in this morning, uh, that we had a the nice presentation from NASA, Mark, and uh, from Ulrich from Ether, and uh, uh, Lena from Canada. Uh, they have a lot of beautiful picture, but um, I'm sorry, I have no picture in my slide. <laughs> and, but uh, for your information, uh, the, we JAXA has a lot of beautiful pictures. So if you have, if, if you like, you go to the uh, JAXA website. <laughs> so let me uh, go. Okay. Uh, so this is the background. The JAXA has a. Uh, right now, the JAXA has seven astronauts, and uh, they started the, uh, uh, staying the, uh, in the ISS in 2009. Uh, so, uh, JAXA, JAXA astronaut has the uh, 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 right to go to the ISS in every one or two years. So that means the uh, JAXA we have uh, eight. Uh, eight ISS experience, uh, ISS mission uh, for, for 10 years. So, and in the beginning of this program, the JAXA, uh, Japanese government had, does not have any rules or laws for radiation protection against space radiation. Uh, however, uh, as you know, that because space radiation is a major exposure source for astronauts, so JAXA has to manage it for secure, securing safety and health of astronauts. So uh, JAXA made one rule and on radiation exposure management for Japanese astronauts. Uh, we, uh, the, first, uh, the first issue of the rule was established in 2001 based on the ISLP 60 1990 recommendation uh, because it is easy easy for JAXA to, to get the understanding from the uh, Japanese experts. And so we use the, uh, the concept and uh, this method of the ICLP-60. After that, uh, uh, we revised the carrier effect dose limit uh, based on the uh, ICLP-103 uh, 2007 uh, recommendation. Uh, this slide shows the uh, overview of our exposure management. Uh, so uh, this slide shows uh, our, our exposure management starts from the astronaut uh, selection phase and continue to the, until the end of the astronaut career, that means the retirement of astronaut. Uh, it consists of the four categories, uh, and those management, Explanation of risk, modeling and measurement, uh, medication. Uh, also, we use uh, uh, some tools for uh, to this management. And also, uh, so uh, uh, in in the selection phase, uh, we collect uh, carrier dose uh, in the uh, from from the astronaut candidate, and uh, also we explain the risk before they become the astronauts. Uh, so after that, the, uh, we collect the, the annual dose uh, and the uh, uh, feedback of the dose and risk to the astronaut every year. And also we do the annual examination, uh, annual medical examination to, for the astronaut. Uh, and uh, uh, when the when an astronaut is assigned to the specific mission, uh, we uh, predict the dose during the space flight and explain risk from it to astronaut. And uh, uh, we also do the uh, pre-flight medical examination too. Uh, during space flight, uh, during space flight, uh, just astronaut Kelly, uh, personal dosimeter, JAXA provides during the flight. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, JAXA provides. And during the flight, uh, we monitor ISS environment. Uh, environment does 
uh, which is from uh, the NASA instrument TPEC. And uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, we also monitor the solar terrestrial uh, environment using JAXA monitoring and alert system. After astronauts return to the Earth, uh, we retrieve the personal dosimeters, uh, calculating in flight uh, cumulative dose and feedback list to astronaut himself. Uh, we usually do the post flight uh, medical examination. Uh, medical examination. Uh, so these are overview, and uh, I will uh, introduce more detail of each operation and, uh, and tools for dose management from the next slide. So uh, this table shows our do uh, carrier effective dose limit. Uh, this is for limiting uh, carrier risk of Japanese IS astronaut. Uh, it depends on, as you can see, the, uh, the first space flight, uh, the age of the first space flight, and uh, the gender. Uh, so uh, those limit uh, the the uh, as you can see the the, the younger astronaut flight to the space the smaller the those limit value should be and also those limits for female are smaller than one for male even in the same flight uh, flight age so here is the uh, concept. Uh, for establishing the dose limit. Uh, we thought that the carrier cancer mortality shall be less than uh, around 3%. The, uh, the method we use for calculating cancer uh, mortality is based on the uh, ICRP-103. Uh, for solid cancer mortality, uh, we use the weighted average of access uh, ERL model and EAR models. Leukemia mortality for, uh, we use uh, uh, EAR models. And uh, in both cases, uh, we use the Japanese natural cancer mortality uh, uh, for, for, for calculation. So, uh, and uh, eventually, uh, we need the exposure scenario to calculate, risk, calculate risks uh, for the purpose uh, we assume that uh, uh, one, we assume that the one astronaut goes to space three times uh, in every three years. Uh, this scenario is the uh, we think that this scenario is the severest two cases we can assume for the Japanese astronaut. So uh, this is the part of our the calculation result for male astronaut. Uh, for example, uh, in this case, uh, I mean, this case, uh, in this case, uh, uh, male astronauts go to the space uh, in 27, 30, 33 years old, uh, which has uh, uh, 100 misseeded in each space flight, respectively. In this case, the carrier, dose, uh, carrier cancer mortality goes to 1.6 percent. That mean, so we made uh, uh, the same calculation for the any many cases. Uh, so uh, the the value uh, with the yellow hatching uh, uh, once we refer for establishing the the dose limit as I told the previous slide. So these are for female astronaut. Uh, the, you can see the risk uh, bigger than the male uh, in the same, uh, same, same condition. So uh, this table shows the JAXA organ dose limit. Uh, we established the, this limit for avoiding the irreversible effects. Uh, of the organ, uh, fish re tissue reaction may not be uh, protected by the can uh, carrier effective dose limit. So 
uh, the limits are based on the threshold value uh, stated in the ICRP, uh, ICRP reports. And the, but the, uh, of course, some of them have been modified from the ICRP reports. For example, the ICRP report stated the threshold for the acute effects. However, it is difficult for us to use acute to the actual operation. So uh, we established those limit for one week, uh, for one week limit using the threshold for the acute uh, effects. Uh, recently, uh, we, uh, we know the ICFP report 118 has been issued, and uh, that was uh, about the length of I, uh, uh, the threshold change. So now we are proceeding the review of the I, those limits, uh, uh, we, uh, whether we need to change or not. Uh, so, we think that the, those limits shall be applied to the occupational uh, exposure of astronauts. So, these three exposures are considered to be occupational uh, exposure of uh, Japanese ISS astronauts. Uh, of course, the space radiation exposure during space flight, and uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, the astronaut uh, is, has been uh, exposed uh, during some training. For example, the uh, space radiation exposure uh, from the flight operation training with airplane, and also uh, they have uh, ladung, ex ladung exposure in the cave uh, during the behavior training, the, the leadership or fellowship, and so on. And also, uh, we think the uh, exposure from astronaut-specific medical examination uh, is the uh, occupational exposure for the astronaut too. So we uh, apply the, uh, those limits to these exposures. Uh, this is our regular procedure of annual dose management for all the Japanese astronauts. Uh, as uh, Dr. Uri uh, Strobe, and uh, we have uh, some uh, flight surgeon in JAXA, so they uh, they collect the the facts, uh, these things. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. These things, and uh, using these facts, uh, the JAXA radiation, spe JAXA radiation specialist uh, calculates those these doses. And uh, also, uh, they calculate the risks and uh, explain, uh, the make a report to it and to explain the astronaut uh, for for their uh, for their dosing and risks. And uh, uh, the next is about the space flight specific op operation. Uh, this is procedure of flight assignment. Uh, when an astronaut is assigned to the specific ISS flight mission, uh, we predict the dose during the space flight. Uh, uh, here is the, the flow chart to calculate uh, doses. Uh, we have a, a database about uh, uh, a database of uh, particle tra transportation through ISS geometry, and uh, it is because uh, it was built in almost 20 years ago, so uh, the, we, use, we still use the old-fashioned uh, uh, code and uh, models, and, but uh, uh, we get the uh, facts inside of ISS module, uh, and uh, uh, after that, uh, we use the uh, uh, state duration in each module and difference conversion factor, uh, uh, to get the uh, uh, FFV dose and organ doses. Uh, uh, while astronaut in the space flight, we have to confirm the uh, accumulated dose uh, within the dose limit, but uh, it is difficult to calculate organ dose in real time because uh, uh, we, 
we actually cannot recognize the where the astronaut is, is in ISS in real time. So uh, we use the uh, uh, readings of the active instrument, uh, the TPEC, uh, which NASA provides, uh, as a reference of exposure. We call the, the, the value is a mission reference exposure. Uh, uh, the infrared dose management using the MLE is uh, uh, proved to be effective uh, by some experiments. I'll show you some result. Uh, this is a certain result uh, regarding the relationship between the MLE and actual uh, calculated dose uh, in-flight mission from July to November in 2012. Uh, the duration corresponds to the uh, solar maximum. Uh, the blue dot is uh, show the MRE, and uh, the purple solid line shows about uh, the uh, actual uh, uh, action level. So uh, uh, the action level uh, had been uh, action level is set based on the uh, predicted by NASA. Uh, if ML, MLE exceeds the action level, we are supposed to do some. Uh, some uh, active actions uh, in order to reduce doses. Uh, uh, it was uh, uh, it, it was loose. And it was five loose. Uh, we uh, uh, we used the the small bar uh, uh, calculated organ dose in flight. Uh, this green solid line shows the. Uh, and the uh, annual dose limit for BF4, which is the smallest uh, dose limit in our uh, in our dose limit. So you can see the uh, the calculated dose is much less than the dose limit. So this means that, that we can consider that the calculated organ dose in flight are within dose limit as long as the MLE dose uh, MLE does not exceed the action level in solar maxima. Uh, we have the same result uh, for the solar minimum. So that means that we can consider the same things in the solar minimum. So after uh, astronaut return to the Earth, uh, we, have to, uh, we, uh, we have to calculate the dose. Uh, as I said, uh, we uh, our, our Japanese astronaut carry uh, personal dosimeter in ISS. Uh, we leave personal dosimeter uh, after uh, astronaut return to Earth. Uh, just a personal dosimeter, uh, uh, we call the crew padres or JSCPD, uh, consists of the TLDs and the CL39 track detectors. So we can get the uh, accumulated uh, absorbed dose and uh, accumulated LED distribution uh, from the dosimeters. And uh, because we need uh, effective dose and uh, organ doses uh, for uh, dose management, so we have to convert the readings to effective dose and organ doses. Uh, so this formula uh, shows uh, uh, what we do getting effective dose uh, we can calculate uh, those equivalent uh, using the uh, leading from the uh, 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 personal dosimeters and the uh, corresponding to the each LET being of LET distribution. Uh, after that, we convert the uh, this dose equivalent to the effective dose uh, the, using the, the ratio uh, of calculated the effective dose to the skin doses, assuming that the uh, uh, dose equivalent from the uh, personal dosimeter cost, uh, is equivalent to the skin dose. So uh, uh, when those calculation is done, we, we go for risk assessment to explain risk after the mission to astronaut. 
So uh, this is summary. Uh, just made one rules of radiation exposure management uh, for Japanese ISS astronauts and uh, has conducted operation of the management uh, cooperating with all international partners successfully for 10 years. Uh, uh, using this experience, uh, we would like to contribute to developing the new guideline or rules for radiation exposure management in future manned space missions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Tatsuto. Uh, okay, questions. Um, there's been a couple of questions here that are around why the 3% um, career dose limit um, on the basis of cancer mortality was selected. Um, do you have any, um, can you provide some more input as to how that was um, reached as the threshold? Threshold? Uh, the cancer mo uh, about the cancer mortality, the, we, uh, I think that the, it's a uh, concept of the uh, ICRP-103, so we use the same concept uh, that to set to establish the carrier dose limit. And also we uh, use the 3% can, um, cancer mortality. Uh, it, I think it is the same as the ICRP uh, concept. Right. Um. I suppose a follow-on for that is how do you communicate risk um, to people or to astronauts after the calculations have been conducted? And probably a question for me, how, how much were the astronauts consulted in the establishment of uh, the career dose limit? Oh, a good question then. Uh, um, <laughs> Actually, we, we made the, the report about the risk uh, of the, from the dose. Uh, uh, it, it is, I, we uh, submit, we hand uh, to the report to the astronaut, and uh, uh, if they have a question, uh, we, uh, we answer to that. Uh, uh, for example, the, the, uh, uh, they would like to know the, the uh, for, for kind of meaning the, the 3% is, for example, uh, we answer that, the, for example, that the, um, uh, any other industrial risk, uh, we, we compare the, the 3% uh, with the, uh, the risk from the, any other uh, industrial risk. So uh, we, we do such a thing. And I'll provide one comment, which is more feedback on your presentation. Um, Dr. Komiyama, your presentation had no pictures, but is plenty of useful and practical information that can be taken into account for de developing generic recommendations <laughs> and guidelines. Thank you very much. <laughs>